Hello people, now let us look at this squamous blepharitis. It is also called as seborrheic uh, blepharitis. Where are we? So, we are looking at blepharitis which comes under the inflammation of eyelids. Inflammation of eyelids, so many disorders are there. One of them is blepharitis. Okay. So, blepharitis is uh, what it is. Uh, it is a inflammation of the lid margin. Okay. Lid margin is inflamed. That much you can remember. It can be subacute or chronic condition. Extremely common it is and there are many types. Bacterial, seborrheic. And when this uh, uh, bacterial and seborrheic mix, uh, mix up, it becomes mixed bacterial with seborrheic blepharitis. Then you have uh, mybomitis uh, and then you have parasitic. Okay, Parasitic is not called infection, so it will be called infestation. Uh, we have finished bacterial. Now let us look at squamous blepharitis, which is also called as seborrheic blepharitis. Let us look at the important points here first. It is usually associated with uh, the uh, seborrhea of scalp. That is, if you have dandruff in the scalp, you might get it. Okay. It, uh, then the glands of Z secrete abnormal excessive neutral lipids which are splitted by Corvini bacterium. Corvini bacterium acne is a name. Okay, Corvini bacterium acne is a bacteria. It is that uh, secretion lipid, neutral lipid is converted into some irritating free fatty acid. Oh, wow. It is converted into irritating free fatty acid. This is characterized by accumulation of whitish soft scales along the lid margin. So, there is some whitish soft scales along the lid margin. Let us see. Whitish soft scales along the lid margin. Yes, we can see that. So, why is this happening guys? What are we looking at? Seborrheic or squamous. It is also called as squamous. Then, uh, it is associated with what? You will have dandruff in the uh, scalp and uh, it will be this... Uh, See, where is your scalp? Right here. See, here is your eyebrow and then here is your scalp and here you have dandruff and uh, as uh, uh, you are having dandruff even on your uh, eyelid. So, what happened? Glands of Z's. Where are these glands of Z's? In the eyelash uh, uh, follicle, hair follicle, you have gland of Z's and gland of mole, right? That is where these glands open. So, uh, what is affected here? This one, Z, gland of Z's, seborrheic. This gland of Z's, what it does? It is secreting something. Uh, it is secreting abnormal excessive neutral lipids okay it is secreting abnormal excessive neutral lipids these are split by the corvini bacterium acne that's some bacteria and that is converted into free fatty acids irritating irritating free as fatty acids okay so what will be there here there will be accumulation of whitish soft scales along the lid march now we are going into some more details we are going to look at more more details seborrheic blepharitis is pri primarily anterior blepharitis with some spillover posteriorly. So, it is usually anterior and some spillover posteriorly. It is very common. It is associated with seborrhea of the scalp. Yes, that we know it is associated with seborrhea of the scalp. Some constitutional and metabolic factors play in its etiology. Uh, glands of Z secrete abnormal excessive neutral lipids which are split by Corvini bacterium acne into irritating free fatty acids. This also we know. Symptoms, what will be the symptoms? They complain of deposition of whitish material that is soft scales. Yes, we saw soft whitish scales at the lid margin. And there is mild discomfort, irritation, occasional watering and history of falling eyelashes. This is metarosis. What are the signs? When you examine this person, what will you see? We will see that there is accumulation of white dandruff like scales. Yes, on the lid margin among the lashes. Removing these scales is found to be hyper. Uh, when you see, uh, remove the scales and see below it. It will be hyperemic surface and greasy. There will be no ulcer here because in bacterial, when you remove it, there will be ulcer and bleeding, isn't it? But here it is not like that. It's just going to be hyperemic and greasy. The lashes fa fall out easily but are usually replaced quickly without distortion. So uh, the lashes keep falling but new lashes keep coming also. Then lid margin is thickened and what is that lid margin thickened called as some tylosis or something, right? And then uh, sharp posterior border tends to be rounded leading to epiphora in long canting cases. The lid margin, uh, the sharp posterior border tends to be rounded leading to epiphora in long standing cases. Is this the posterior border? Signs of black bacterial blepharitis uh, may be super added. Yeah, these people in addition to this, they might have some bacterial blepharitis also and that will become mixed. Oh, so mixed also they finished off here only. Okay. So, uh, let us look at the complications that will arise because of this. They are saying the complications will be same as bacterial blepharitis. So, let us look at this. Recurrent styes, recurrent conjunctivitis, marginal keratitis, madarosis, um, trichiasis, poliosis, tylosis. You know the meanings of all this, right? 
so recurrent styes means infection of the uh, hair follicle uh, then uh, recurrent conjunctivitis marginal keratitis maderosis all these eyelashes are falling trichiasis the uh, cilia are misdirected po uh, poliosis means there is greying of these uh, eye uh, lashes okay then uh, eversion of punctum eversion of punctum means this is puncta here okay and they are getting everted so there can be epiphora right and because of epiphora and the watering the watering the skin can undergo eczema here they also had told us about ectropion right so the outward rolling of the eyelid margin ectropion also can be there right then what did they say epiphora eczema of the skin all that these are all the uh, complications guys of bacterial we had already seen in bacterial same thing they are saying will be the uh, complications for seborrheic uh, blepharitis or squamous blepharitis now how will you treat this people treat general measures hair health balanced diet hygiene and all that right the seborrhea of the scalp should be adequately treated treat the scalp that's it you're done local measures so you remove the scales help uh, uh, you know give lukewarm solution with the help of lukewarm solution of 3% soda bicarb or baby shampoo uh, you are going to remove the scales and uh, frequent application of combined antibiotic and steroid uh, you are going to apply these to the lid margin the ointments wow so they are going to give you antibiotic and steroids you will apply here then you will wash with some lukewarm water and baby shampoo and try to remove these scales antibiotics um, may be required if patient has mixed yes if they have mixed with bacterial and the seborrheic then you will have to give them antibiotics guys do you know what this um, uh, zeis gland uh, secretes we are talking about zeis gland right the zeis gland is what type of gland it's a sebaceous gland right so it's a sebaceous gland okay so we are done with uh, squamous blepharitis or seborrheic uh, blepharitis still what is done left you know posterior blepharitis or mybomitis is left and parasitic blepharitis lash infestation is left let us look at uh, these uh, again for now what did we look at squamous blepharitis seborrheic 